Is the Sony 16 to 50mm kit lens good enough or do you need an upgrade? In this video, we'll look at use cases and example videos and photos from using the Sony 16 to 50mm kit lens to decide whether you need to upgrade. On this channel, I make lots of tips and tricks videos for Sony mirrorless cameras. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. So if you have a Sony mirrorless camera, such as the Sony A5100 or the Sony A6000, then there's a good chance it came with the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. However, if you do some research around this lens, you'll probably find a lot of negative reviews about it online. But is it really that bad? Let's break down what this lens does. 16 to 50 millimeters means the zoom range of the lens which, at its widest, is a reasonably wide angle, good for recording vlogs and YouTube videos. And at its full zoom, 50mm, means you can focus in on a subject, but it's not a massive zoom, so it isn't going to cut it for wildlife and sports photography. 50mm is a good focal length traditionally for things like portrait photography. But one of the downsides to this lens is the aperture, which is f3.5 at 16mm and all the way up to f5.6 at 50mm. This means a couple of things. It essentially means the, this lens isn't letting that much light into it, especially in comparison to, say, a prime lens, which is a fixed focal length lens, so that means it's basically just 50 millimeters. you can't zoom in and out. This often means that a lot more light can be allowed into it, so you'll see an f number, which is the aperture number, of maybe as low as something like f1.4, which means a lot more light is being let into the lens. And the amount of light that is being let into a lens can affect a couple of things that are very important for both video and photography. The first of which is depth of field, and this affects portrait photography especially. A shallow depth of field is often very desirable on portrait photography because it means that you can get nice blurry backgrounds while you keep your subject in focus. This often means that you will bring the kind of focus of your photo to the point that you're trying to focus on by keeping everything else in the background a bit out of focus. But traditionally, this is what a lot of portraits will look like, and you'll often find a lot of the more professional looking photos looking like this. But with the kit lens, especially if you're trying to take portrait photography at 50 millimeters, that narrow aperture of 5.4 means that you're not going to be able to get as blurry backgrounds. They'll be reasonably blurry enough, but it isn't going to look like professional portrait photography. In addition to this, the narrow aperture is also going to mean that the low light performance isn't as good with this lens. Clearly, as it's not letting as much light into the lens as another lens might, it just isn't enough light to brighten up your image. So your camera will probably have to compensate by slowing down the shutter speed so that more light is being let into the lens and then into the camera. But this means that you will end up with blurrier photos, especially at night or indoors if you haven't got good quality lighting. And this can affect both photography and video. And this is definitely something worth bearing in mind if you think you are going to be doing a lot of low light video and photography work. Clearly, the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens isn't a professional lens in any way, shape, or form. But does this make it a bad lens? Well, for me, no. It's a good all-round performer, and for a lot of people, that is exactly what they'll need. It's a small and lightweight lens, which makes it a perfect travel lens for especially a smaller body camera. It's wide enough and sharp enough for decent landscapes, and it has a good zoom range for family and pet photography. It also has autofocus built into the lens, which a lot of lenses don't, especially the cheaper lenses. Having autofocus makes it a really great option for things like vlogging or YouTube videos where you might be using the camera's video functionality a lot more and you might be moving around with the camera. You want to be able to steady that shake as much as possible. So that's definitely a bonus to the kit lens. But for me, its biggest pro is its price, or should I say lack of price. Because this lens comes with so many different cameras, it's essentially free. I would never recommend to anyone to go out and buy this lens, but I would definitely say if you are in the market for a camera and you want it to be as simple as possible, so having a lens bundled in, it's exactly why it's called the kit lens. And I think they've chosen to make this lens as it is so that it covers so many different use cases for as lowest price as possible. So if you've got the option to buy a camera body, say, with no lens, and it's only $50 more for this lens to come with it, then I would say definitely always go for it. In fact, I've gone to the point where I bought a second camera, and I could have got one just the body only with no kit lens when I already had a kit lens, and I thought, well, for a few dollars more, maybe $20, $30 more secondhand, 
I just bought it with another kit lens anyway, because I thought, well, if this one breaks, they still have use for it. So I would definitely say it's a lens worth getting hold of if you're brand new to photography, or you are just looking to have a second lens in your arsenal as I think you'll always find use cases for it, especially because of its smaller size. As I said, I've had decent results with both photography and video with this lens. I've been using it on and off for around four years, ever since I bought my first camera, the Sony a5100. I thought I'd be using this lens for a few weeks and now I think, oh, it's clearly not good enough. The, cam the video and photos aren't sharp, but that just simply isn't the case. I think you can survive with this lens for quite a long time until you really nail down exactly what type of photography you are trying to achieve. And by that point, you'll probably start working out what your frustrations with this lens are. If you're doing a lot of wildlife or sports photography, for example, that 50 millimeter zoom range isn't going to be good enough. So you might jump into the market and find something like the 55 to 210 millimeter, which is a cheap Sony lens, which I've made a review on here, which is certainly a really good next level zoom range lens without breaking the bank. Or if you've gone down more of the portrait route, you might want to find something with that wide aperture that we were talking about before. So something like the Sigma 50mm f1.4. You'll be able to get those really nice shallow depth of field portraits with that nice fixed focal length and it will be also a really great performer in low light. Or maybe you're like me and you just want to be able to continue doing good all-round photography, whether that's video, sports photography, just a little bit of everything, a lens that you can use for everyday use. So my upgrade path was that I went for the Sony 18 to 105 millimeter lens. Again, this is a zoom lens with autofocus built in, but it has that zoom range so that you can kind of have flexibility over the type of shooting that you do. You don't have to move away or closer to your subject too much. Just gives me the versatility for the type of shooting that I like to do. And that has a constant aperture of f4, which means whether you're zoomed into 105 or all the way out to 18 millimeters, it's always the same maximum aperture of f4. I also find the 18 to 105 a really great video lens. I use it for my YouTube video stuff like this. So it was just a good lens to supersede the kit lens for me anyway. Though, if you're new to the world of mirrorless cameras, the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens is certainly an improvement over smartphone cameras. And as I've said throughout this video, it does most things to a decent standard. It's not a standout performer, but it's not too terrible at any individual thing. And as there's more and more demand these days for better cameras to use as a webcam, whether that's for streaming or for conference calls, stuff like that, a camera such as the Sony A5100 with the kit lens would be a perfect pickup for this situation, and you wouldn't even need to be thinking about getting a different lens apart from the kit lens, which is a great bonus. I think a lot of people these days will be buying cameras like this for this purpose, and they'll want to know that the kit lens is good enough for this type of content, and it is absolutely perfect to use as a webcam. I use it quite a lot. If I'm using the Sony A5100, I don't put the 18 to 105 on it. I put the kit lens back on it. It's smaller. It doesn't get in your face too much. It's just a perfect lens for that situation. And of course, upgrading lenses is going to get expensive very quickly. The Sony 18 to 105 that I've been talking about costs around £400, $400, which is a lot of money if you are brand new to photography. I definitely use the kit lens to the absolute maximum of its capacity before looking to upgrade, and it is just a really great budget option. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. If you want to check out any of my photography, you can find it on Instagram at Aaron.Prescott. But that's it from me for now. Until next time, see ya.